welcome to a multitude of counselors for the second part of our program entitled Prayer Partners Become Life Partners. We've been hearing from Jason and Natanya Vanderlaan, and they told us how they forged their relationship in the context of prayer, how when they first met, they were yeah. working through a book that was kind of a 40 days of prayer kind of a book, and they decided to do it together, and they ended up falling in love in that context, which is just so cool. So we want to hear more about the end of your courtship and then move into what's working mm -hmm. in your relationship now that you've been married a total of an amazing eight months. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to introduce my panel here. I've got David Guerrero. He's a biblical counselor from Wisconsin and Shelley Wiggins, who is a licensed professional counselor from Michigan and Jason and Natanya Vanderlaan. And I want to ask you, um, I want to just bring out the fact that when you guys met, and this is the thing I love about your relationship, you were in the line of duty. Da uh, Jason fought his way up to New Hampshire for that mm -hmm. seminar, and it was actually a training where I was helping people learn how to help people. Mm -hmm. It's called the Bide Helper Training, and you came to that training because mm -hmm. you want to learn, you want to be equipped to help people more effectively, and yeah. so did Natanya, and you were both focused on ministry, and in that context, you met each other. So we were chatting about how people sit in their bedroom and wait for God to bring them someone. <laughs> what they really need to do is get out there, focus their life on God and serving others. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, they will put themselves mm -hmm. in you know, social contexts where not only will they meet more people, period, but they'll meet more people that would be an appropriate partner. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing is it's cool that you forged your relationship in the context of service because it's really not healthy to be totally self-focused in a twosome, and twosomes yeah. can become very, very selfish. Yeah. So the fact that you were outwardly focused even in the formation processes of your relationship is really quite quite amazing. So let's talk, any, anything more that we need to cover in terms of the courtship phase before we move into your marriage? Talk to me about- Well, the cliffhanger that yeah. was left on the, yeah. the first part of the program, mm. I'd like you to tell the other part of it. So you're at the border and you're in tears and- I think I was in tears. Oh, you were the, <laughs> yeah. probably both in tears. in tears too. Um, did you think he was gonna pop the question right then? Oh, no, no. I didn't think he was going to pop the question, but it was a space and time where I think we both really felt the gravity mm -hmm. of what we'd been afforded. Mm -hmm. Was God giving you permission to take that step? Like, what, was, what was going on in both of your minds? I think that we were both like so in love already at that point and yeah. so excited mm -hmm. about each other. Mm -hmm. It's so sweet. <laughs> it's precious. It really is beautiful. And it was at that kind of that moment that was kind of some of the reality was setting in yeah. that mm -hmm. being committed to loving each other meant a lot of big changes in our life. Mm -hmm. And so starting to begin to wade through those and to face those. And, you know, we realized through prayer and mm -hmm. talking to each other that we were perfectly matched for each other. That doesn't mean that there weren't a lot of differences in mm -hmm. a lot of places where yes. we experienced conflict mm -hmm. and had to work through that and learn exactly. how to grow. And that was kind of the beginning of, of facing reality in a good way. So yeah. who, who did you ask Sorry, first? Did you ask her first? Did you ask? Yeah, I was going to say, can you Did you tell ask us about someone the else first? I'm just curious. Uh, before I proposed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm. I think... It was an amazing proposal. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had talked about getting married before I, I asked her parents. And... Um, the idea was not so much to ask permission as to ask a blessing. Mm. Mm. Because she's a, a human being and she has her own free choice. Amen. And, but we really value and honor our parents yes. and their perspective and mm -hmm. especially their spiritual direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we want them to be fully on board as mm -hmm. well. Totally. Amen. And so, Love it. Yeah. yeah, I called, I called up her parents uh, on the phone and I was uh, holding on my phone on FaceTime and they, they asked me, can you, can you put your phone somewhere more stable? Because I was like... <laughs> I was making the nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit nervous. Um, but yeah, it, it went well and, yeah. and I got their blessing. And Amen. And then what happened? Tell us about the candles. <laughs> Just real brief. Okay, so uh, I was planned a, a really lovely evening, uh, a date, and uh, after dinner I had rented out this artist loft and I had had my brothers, uh, two of my brothers and my sister, help me set up 500 candles. Um, 500 this candles. Place. And there was mirrors and stuff. So the it was walls were covered so in mirrors and gold. Yeah. 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 
But I, I think that all of this is really important to mention because there was a space, even in a very short frame of time, where he pursued me. Amen. You know, I told him when he first asked if I was interested in dating mm -hmm. that I only date local. I, I had made that up, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I, I didn't want to do long distance. Mm -hmm. And so he was driving six plus hours every other weekend, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that kind of commitment is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it spoke uh, deeply to now, me personally. Do you think that, that's, that the guy does the sacrificing and not the woman, or is it both equally, or is it a little more important that the man really put himself out there? Because that's kind of the school I'm from, is that the guy takes the bigger risks. I wouldn't say the woman takes no risks. but. So I definitely wouldn't say that the woman takes no risks. But you're no like such risk. a feminist that I wonder about how you feel about that. <laughs> right. Pause. I think that we should both be willing to yeah. put in work and commitment, yeah. Yeah. but at the same time, like, you're asking for a huge commitment of me. Yeah. You're asking for right. my heart, my whole life, mm -hmm. and mm. I think you should have to work for it a little. Yeah. 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 What so. I really appreciated about her is like, I knew that she was, you know, very self-sufficient and confident. Mm -hmm. And a lot of yeah. times the idea that the man takes initiative means that the woman is more passive yeah. and isn't capable. Yeah. And I think what I really liked and saw here is that she was fully capable, fully capable. and she voluntarily left space for me mm -hmm. to make that first move, to make that first step. Um, even in conversations on the phone, mm -hmm. like at first she was just like talk, talk, talking. And then she was like, I'm going to, I'm going to like stop talking and like let you lead the conversation. And uh, for that was an example, or even like opening the car door. She's obviously very capable of opening the car door but she'll pause and let me do it because it gives me space to... To, to me, I, I, maybe I'm too old school, but it does something for the development of the man to have to put himself out there for mm. the woman. There's yeah. something really, really symbolic about that, Christ lo loving the church yeah. in that self-sacrificial mm -hmm. yeah, way. For sure. So the same self-sacrifice works in the context mm. of marriage. And let's mm -hmm. talk, because I think cumulatively we have quite a few years of marriage represented here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys have a whopping eight months of marriage. Mm -hmm. But I think you're starting from what I've shared mm -hmm. with you, what you've shared with me, mm -hmm. I think you're starting to discover mm -hmm. what actually works. And that's, you're calling it radical transparency yeah. and work having the hard conversations. Mm -hmm and working through things instead of shelving them, instead of pretending they're not there. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that yeah, a little sure. bit? Yeah, sure. Um, from the very <laughs> beginning, and I do believe it was Holy Spirit inspired, I was so committed to being very, almost painfully honest sometimes with Jason. Mm -hmm. And as he's put it several times, we'd already played the game. And so we weren't looking to do any of that. We were just offering ourselves as we were mm -hmm. and that's kind of evolved mm -hmm. now that we're married sometimes it means being willing to sit down and have those hard conversations when i don't agree with him but i know that it's going to mean a lot of talking which is not always my favorite thing like i'm the more extroverted but i like to get things done quickly i just yeah. say everything that's in my mind and then i'm done yeah Jason is more pensive. He's a writer and a poet. He reflects, and sometimes he'll come back three days later and still want to talk for an hour about something. Mm. That's difficult for me, but creating that space yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has been really beautiful in our relationship because it's a partnership. Yeah. Can you give us one example of oh, something sure, you would sure. talk through? Yeah, I'd like to know a little more <laughs> of the nuts and bolts here. Mm. I know you're a little different in your thinking. Or, and I think it's important that people know they don't have to be a, a, a match, a complete yeah. Yeah. replica Maybe of one another. Maybe we should give them a random topic off the <laughs> top of our head and Feminism. just say chew on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or, or <laughs> that one might you, be a little bit far. <laughs> or could you provide for us what you mean by providing that space? Is it, so I th what does sorry. that mean? Yeah. I think very similar to what Jason mentioned in regards to like being on the phone. I will talk a mile a minute. And I, I prayed about this because I wanted there to be an exchange. Mm -hmm. And God brought my mind to like phone calls, like conference calls I would have with work. And we would have someone in charge of facilitating a call. Mm -hmm. That was their job. And in doing that, they had to create the space for other people to talk. Yeah. And God's like, you need to create the space. Okay. And so I'm waiting for him to respond instead of just running my mouth, mm -hmm. right? I'm asking questions 
or affording him, him the initiative and saying, hey, mm -hmm. you're the one facilitating the call today. You take the lead. Mm. And so we're refocusing how we conversate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we mm, can... You're matching each other's pace. Kind exactly, of. Mm -hmm. exactly. And this is something that Jason brought to my attention. But a lot of, like, big topics, we don't agree but we're not too far away from each other. And a lot of the success of talking through a difficult topic is the way you talk about it. It's mm -hmm. more exactly. about the process the content. You exactly. can get through a lot of things in which you see exactly. things differently mm -hmm. if you can respect each other and really listen exactly. to each other mm -hmm. and work through it effectively. Exactly. So he's brought yeah. me to the realization that our language is polarizing, uh. even in regards to dating, oh. right? So sometimes he'd say something and I'd be like, ding, purity movement. And my mind shuts down. I'm not listening anymore. And sometimes I would say things, and he'd be like, Whoa. Now, can you clarify that that was the sort of the vestiges of this experience you had in a, in a Protestant <coughs> private school? Yes. Where you felt there was a lot of shame and guilt put on you. Exactly. Over the issue of dating. And exactly. so you'll have a traumatic response when he'll talk and sound something like that. And all of a sudden, I'm not listening. Shut down, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But we ultimately believe similar things. But are you able to then say, this is how I feel as a result of you just saying, and look at the emotional reaction itself, rather than personalizing it yeah. and turning it into a debate? Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. what's been really great about that is, you know, on, on so many different things, further dating or from our different backgrounds in race or culture or politics, any of these things, like she was saying, there's so much polarizing language. Mm -hmm. And so... It's very different though, you know, if you're online on Facebook and you're just going to like type up something and send it off to the person who has the opposing view, mm -hmm. it's really easy to create that picture of who that is and what they hold their values and make them very simple. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But when you're sitting in the same room with someone that you love and respect and think is really smart and, and value who they are, yes. and they say something that if you saw on the internet you would like write off immediately, I have to be like, huh she might have a point. Yeah. I value who this person is, and even more than that, I'm committed to unity with her. So you're hearing the same thing mm -hmm. from her that you would have heard on Facebook or Twitter or something, and yeah. you would have written that person off. You hear the same thing from her, someone you love, and you start to consider it because you love her. Yeah, yeah, and that being committed to that has really <laughs> created space for us to work past the polarizing language and then realize, oh, we're actually really close to the same idea mm -hmm. in the end we just are using such different language right. because of our backgrounds when you're talking about issues like that do you mm -hmm. try to figure out what the other person what they the core value is there and then try to discern if maybe you have a similar core value like if she's talking about she has a reaction to a, something about the purity movement mm -hmm. her core value there is freedom Mm. And if a lot of times you, who maybe triggered her, could say to her, I can see that that's really a hot button for you because you value freedom so much, yeah. will make her feel secure and being understood by you mm. in such a way that she's able to look more objectively at what you said. Mm. Have you found mm. that that's true? I think so. So I, I just thought of a really great example. Okay. This was several months ago, but Jason posted something on Facebook. I, I don't really use Facebook that much, but it was an article that he shared. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't remember exactly what it was in regards to, some, maybe gun control? I don't remember. Something political. Something political. And yeah. um, all sparks started firing. Of you. If I had seen somebody else post that, I think I may have unfriended them. Oh, But wow. my mind was I don't want to unfriend a hot my button. <laughs> right? All of a sudden, I started thinking, why? Why would he share something like that? What is he thinking? And, and so... I sent him a text and we had <laughs> poor Jason he's at work and he sees like this long text because you know this is not a conversation to have publicly yeah and um, <laughs> he re he responded to me very kindly you know and we talked about it briefly mm -hmm. he actually called me and and then I went on doing life mm -hmm. later a friend calls um, one of my best friends she lives in Paris and she says you know I saw this thing Jason just posted and it just I love the way you guys are. And it was, he put a little sub comment. You know, I spoke to my wife and I actually think that this could be very insensitive to certain types of How people yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And I just wanna say, and he pretty much put a cliff note version of our resolution. 
Wow. I didn't even know about it. I didn't ask for it. And you know something Gottman, who's the doyen of marriage, mm -hmm. says that the problem of women, uh, that men tend to resist women's influence and women tend to what we call nag. So women will criticize, mm -hmm. men will resist influence. So the fact that you accepted her influence mm -hmm. probably spoke volumes because it's very difficult sometimes for men to accept mm -hmm. influence from their wives. So the fact that yeah. you let her influence you was really cool. And it was a testimony. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. God has used our relationship and oftentimes what we would call conflict mm -hmm. to testify to other people mm -hmm. in our resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I'm really grateful for that wow. space. Yeah. Speaking of testimony, there's going to be people watching, young people, mm -hmm. and you have a message for young people of hope mm -hmm. and of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. People may have questions for you. I understand mm -hmm. you have a website ministry. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So we work with my parents actually, who have a ministry called Upward Movement Ministry. Okay. We'll be posting our website. Okay, um, at, on their website. Yep, Okay. Um, we'll be posting, well, the actual address um, okay. at the end of the show. And also, I, I know you mentioned that you will be receiving questions. Yeah, also. the Multitude of Counselors has a yeah. website. People contact us all the time through, there's a contact form yeah. and they can they can reach out to you through us. Yeah, too. so that's perfect. But tell us about your ministry. I wanna know more about what you're actually doing with, uh, with the love that God has given the two of you and how you're turning it into ministry. Yeah, so we're actually doing what we call a love tour. Was um, that your idea or? No, that was her idea. <laughs> That's so cool. So you do a love tour and you just get up in front of people and talk about love. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. well, um. yeah the idea was, you <laughs> know, we had our, our wedding and our wedding, we wanted it to be ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted it to be a celebration of what yeah. God was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, our favors were, were the prayer book that we had fallen in love with. We gave those out and uh, mm -hmm. wanted to see people, other people experience transformation mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And so we knew, though, that everyone couldn't come to the wedding. And so we <coughs> picked the cities that had the biggest populations of people we knew. Uh -huh. and we started going to them and uh, sharing our story yeah. and uh, sharing testimony and, and bringing people into a prayer. So you were experience. able to hit your friendship circle and your family circle with, mm -hmm. yeah. with this appearance. And, uh, you know, we were going at these different churches and finding that lots of other people were coming yeah. to hear our story as well. So, so you were like, maybe it's not just about family and friends, maybe other people want to hear from us. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and a ministry was born out of that. Exactly. Yep. And so yeah. that's what you're doing full time now? I mean, what are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we probably are crazy, but we're not doing it full time okay. quite yet, but we're doing it a lot. And um, Where would you like to get to? And, and what would you like to say to people? What's the core of what you're trying to say? Yeah. And do you want to get to the place where you, this is all you're doing, like this is your life? Well, we definitely love to be ministering um, together mm -hmm. full time, but I see the love tour expanding. Mm -hmm. um, we see time and time again in our work that we're creating a space mm -hmm. for people to come together and find reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And we say all the time that it's not really about a love story, mm -hmm. but it's it's a power of prayer story. Mm -hmm. It's a testament of what God can do in your life if you put him to the test. Mm -hmm. And we want to empower people to move into those spaces and see God do his best work. Mm -hmm. So you're a, trying to take what's going on in your marriage and how you've learned how to listen to, or are learning how mm -hmm. to listen to each other and have the hard conversation and have this radical uh, transparency. And you're trying to put that in a form that people can apply to exactly. other relationships. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All and kinds of relationships. I can't really think of anything that the world and the church needs more than what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I've never seen our church so Mm -hmm. embroiled in conflict as it is right now. I'm not trying to broadcast that, but mm -hmm. it's a fact. And I've never seen our mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. so polarized and embroiled in conflict. It's so many families. And the fact that you're bringing this message of reconciliation is, is very meaningful. Well, if we think about it from what we believe in our message, mm -hmm. there were two things that were pure and holy and sanctified before sin entered the world. What was it? We have marriage. Sabbath and marriage. Sabbath and marriage. Sabbath and marriage. Yeah. Yes. So, what are the two things that Satan that wants to attack the most? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The exact mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as a gift to you to protect your marriage from that onslaught, um, we will always be available to you. Mm -hmm. Should you get in mm -hmm. one of those spots, because they'll come. Yeah. Um, you're new eight months into this. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's a lovely book by Gary Thomas. Mm. Um, if I had it, I'd give it to you as a gift right now. It's <laughs> for a wedding gift. It's called Sacred Marriage. Mm. But the subtitle is, What if God intended marriage to make us holy mm. and not just happy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a devotional, mm. but it's deeply spiritual. Mm. and you will be blessed mm. to read that book together. Amen, thank you. Because we were talking about the chemicals of falling in love and how they last for roughly an, a year and a half and then they start to taper off and then comes the real difficult yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Your true characters, you're no longer yeah. on your best behavior. And there's neuro neuroscience going mm. on where yeah. you don't have the dopamine levels and you're dealing with more low mood and that mm. type of thing. And we're looking at you having been married eight months and thinking, I'm not thinking though, you know, disaster ahead because I see that you're employing mm. principles that are going to mm. get you past that threshold where mm. the relationship isn't so naturally gratifying anymore. Mm -hmm. And don't you think that that's the foundation right. of what helps people stay married and stay intimate? Mm. You're not in the lovey-dovey fog. You're in reality. Mm. You know that some of these things will occur because we've already told you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure other people well, have they told you know, too. Because they're wise people and they've observed right. others. Well, you've studied yeah. the Word of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, I think that what stands out for me is how you have built your relationship. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you have built your relationship on prayer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and on the Word of God mm -hmm. and on well, the fruit of the Spirit. When you look at the fruit, fruit of the Spirit, you know, it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, so on and so forth. I see that at least today, and I'm hearing it, mm. that, that, that exudes out of your lives. Mm -hmm. And it's because you've been in contact with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank and you. if every marriage or every courtship was, or dating was built on those principles, mm -hmm. you know, we would see much more healthier marriages. Mm -hmm. so. And I love that your natural compatibility, the things mm. that you enjoy doing, Mm. are very similar mm -hmm. because we can attest as having been married a bit longer than the two of you that when push comes to shove mm. if you don't enjoy doing the simple things like the dishes the laundry mm -hmm. the everyday mm -hmm. stuff yes. together because yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. there's a lot of everyday stuff mm -hmm. but if you can enjoy that together mm. It'll hold you together. Amen. You know, I think it's really good that you fell in love. I, I'm not opposed to the falling in love experience. I thought mm. I think God gives us the capacity for that, like yeah. just just the dizzying mm. almost brain chemical response of, mm -hmm. of that initial bonding. And there's some research to the effect that the intensity of your relationship in that initial phase and and you know, dare I say it, the sexual involvement in the mm -hmm. initial phase creates a neurological basis for long-term mm -hmm. bonding. So mm -hmm. this is God, you know, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the master orchestrator of brain chemicals mm -hmm. working by creating this falling in love experience. Mm -hmm. But eventually that expends itself. Mm -hmm. And often in counseling, I will work with couples that feel like because the feelings have dissipated, mm -hmm. they're at the end of love and their mm -hmm. relationship is no longer viable. Yeah. And I say, no, praise God. Mm -hmm. You've run out of gas in the middle of the Mojave Desert so that God can come along and give Amen. you new gas. And that Amen. new gas is called agape. Amen. It's his divine love. Mm -hmm. And what it's I find is that people, that's right, mm -hmm. if people will yeah. continue, like mm -hmm. Ellen White says, exor keep um, exercising the early attentions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep bestowing those early, so in the courtship phase, you yeah. want to be attentive. You want to drive all the way to Vermont. Mm -hmm. You want to be, you know, driving to Canada for a date and then crying on the way. All that stuff was very natural to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the 5,000 candles or whatever it was, is <laughs> all very natural. But it, you, there's going to become a time when you're not as motivated by your brain chemicals to do those things. But mm. if you continue to do them, what you'll do is you will awaken those brain chemicals Amen. because you've created precedent for it. Amen. So God gives you a freebie in the beginning, <laughs> but he also gives, it's not like pa when you get past that, it's, it's no love, joy, and bonding after that. It's, those chemicals are still there. The mm. sexual attraction is still there. You have to choose Amen. to act in a really a benevolent way toward your spouse yeah. Yeah. and you will bring about those chemical reactions. Yeah. And I really believe it's only the Holy Spirit that gives us the capacity to move beyond that doing space to being. Mm -hmm. And you know, just two weeks ago, we were in Morocco and our first night, we're coming back from a restaurant and Jason's using Google Maps on his phone and two guys on a motorbike came by and swiped it right out of his hand. <gasps> <laughs> 
<gasps> and both of us, of the, course, the phone? the phone, they took his phone and we both start chasing them. Obviously, <laughs> we didn't make it very far, <laughs> but we stop in this circle and I look at Jason. I said, we need to pray. Did you have a password on your phone, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> and I just started praying and it was my first gut reaction you know Amen. and sure. this is something that god is building in us and jason told me after you know i wasn't feeling what you were feeling in that moment <laughs> but he chose to trust oh. trust my instinct to pray mm -hmm. and he entered into that space with me and we both chose to trust in god now five minutes later we still didn't know what to do yeah. and so I felt inspired to pray again. And I told Jason, we asked God to order our steps. This is exactly what we asked for. So he's going to work something beautiful out of this. Mm -hmm. And we prayed again. And not two seconds after I said, amen, a young man came towards us. He said, I saw everything that happened. Someone else stole a very similar phone earlier today. There are cameras we're going to get this taken care of. And he took us through this maze of police and tourist systems to file a report and go through all these steps that we wouldn't have been able mm. to alone. Mm. And you know, it was so powerful. I, I'd love to tell you that we have the phone. Uh, we do not. Mm -hmm. But through that experience, we have something greater. Yeah. We have That's something right. greater. Amen. And I was able to realize God has instilled in us a practice of being. And here's the thing is like that yeah. trial was imposed from the outside, mm -hmm. but you're going to do the same thing when you have trials that involve Amen. the two of you together. You're going to pray through them Amen. and you're going to get through them because God will sustain you through them Amen. and you're going to have bonded because look, we got through that. We can get through anything. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That was That's an example of, you know, us learning to trust each other. But mm. beyond that, like we have this deeper trust in God, in, the Lord. in oh, His presence. And his you know, the Bible says that a wise man builds his house upon mm. a rock. That's right. mm -hmm. And you're building your house upon Christ yeah. Yeah. because you built your lives, you're building Amen. your lives on prayer. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, we've heard an amazing story of how prayer partners became life partners. Mm -hmm. We've heard about the courtship dating phase mm -hmm. of their life and how God built their romance from that. But we've also gotten into some of the nuts and bolts of what works in a context of a long-term relationship. Amen. And we hope you've been encouraged by mm -hmm. these things. Listen, if you've run out of steam in your relationship and you're married, it's, it's not the end of love. It's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. God can bless you moving forward. Let his Holy Spirit lead and his word be your guide. Amen.